I promise Leah I wouldn't keep her too long. So I'm really happy to welcome back Leah Rosenberg, a graduate of the Cyberwise course, who's done wonderful things um, in her career in cyber. She has taught our class, and I hope maybe she will again in the future. And tonight she's going to talk to us about careers in GRC, and I'll I'll just frame it one uh, one more sentence, and that is the course is sort of heavy on pen testing in SOC and quite technical. And Aaron Liebert, your, your instructor, works in that field as a pen tester, particularly. So I wanted um, Leah to share her experience because she works in a different end of the business, which I think is a good end for uh, a lot of people. And so I wanted to give some exposure to that side of the world of cyber opportunities. So without further ado, thank you very much, Leah, for being here. Thank you. Um, it's nice to be back, like I said. Um, okay, so I worked in a field of cyber we call GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance. I also worked, um, which is part of the GRC field, um, as a CISO. Um, Jonathan taught me um, actually taught me something last time I spoke here, that vCISO is a virtual CISO. We called it CISO as a service. Um, the idea with a CISO, uh, CISO stands for Chief Information Security Officer, a company that needs to have a CISO for whatever reason. They need to have someone in charge of protecting their um, information security, cybersecurity, basically. And um, the company might not be large enough to have a or they don't require, they don't have the finances for a full-time CISO, but they need to have it. So they'll employ a virtual CISO, a CISO as a service, part-time, a couple hours a week um, for what they need. Um, large companies, obviously, um, huge banks, huge corporations, they'll have full-time CISOs, a lot of times multiple CISOs. Um, but my role was for smaller companies, companies that um, a lot of them were startups, um, a lot of them were in Israel, some were in um, America, um, actually not in the U.S., but in Canada. Um, and they were smaller companies that needed a CISO. Um, so when we're talking about a CISO, GRC, there's a lot of overlap because what a CISO does is GRC, Governance, Risk, and Compliance. Um, what a CISO doesn't do is they're not going to do the technical aspects, which is a lot of what what you learned, a lot of what um, what Jonathan was mentioning, they're not gonna do a pen test. Um, they might know how to, they, they need to understand the terms and they need to understand what does it mean findings? What are we looking for? What are we doing when we do a pen test? But they're not gonna actually perform it. Um, once a pen test is done, they're gonna look through the report. They need to, again, understand what they're seeing, um, but they're not gonna fix the findings. Um, they're going to more say, we need to do a pen test. Let's schedule it. Let's make sure it happens. Let's speak to the people doing it, make sure they're doing it the right way. Um, and let's make sure that, that the findings are followed up on. Um, so they're managing an overall picture of everything that goes into information security. Um, I found this work last time, so I'll go through it again. A day in the life of a CISO. So what did I do? Um, a day in the life of GRC and CISO. So when I'm going to say GRC separate from CISO, CISO is the CISO as a service role where I'm working for a company and handling their complete information security picture, um, making sure everything is done. And GRC, we might, I might have been hired to take on a specific project where they would say, listen, we need to be compliant with HIPAA. We're a medical, we have medical data. We need to comply with HIPAA. Can you help us comply? And I would work with a company for a month, two months maybe, um, sometimes more, depending on what they were dealing with, what framework they, they were dealing with, and get them compliance. That was that was a specific project. Um, and then we were. I was also doing um, CISO as a service. So what would a day look like? Um, it always starts with coffee. Um, hopefully getting to work on time. And then I would usually, I would almost always start the day answering emails. A lot of emails came in. Um, most of the time, the emails are not urgent. So my my clients that I was a CISO for them, they have my phone number. They had my cell phone number. They know that they can call me um, basically at any hour. I definitely didn't have my phone available at night. We weren't, we weren't considered that available, but a, a CISO for a large company might actually, because if something happens, they literally need to be on call, um, 24 seven. Um, but 
for the most part, I would come in the morning, nothing was really that urgent. I would answer, start answering emails and then go into my first meeting. Meeting might be half an hour, an hour. In this case, for, for the example, we're saying my meeting is with a client that I'm their CISO. So I'm meeting with the CTO, the chief technical officer, which almost every company has that. So he's in, in charge of IT. He's in charge of everything um, computers and tech related. Um, and he, I ask him, um, what's new? Is there, are there any changes? Um, is there anything I need to be aware of? Um, did any, anything happen in the past week, two weeks, month, depending on who I was working with, how often I met with them? Um, and then I would go through my basically checklist of this is what we need to do. This is what's on my information security work plan. These are the items that I need to see covered. Um, I want to know for this month, we need to deal with um, a HIPAA renewal. So how are we going to go about doing that? Do we have the resources? Can we start that next month? Can we start that in two months? Um, I need to see that um, we need to review passwords for all systems. We've spoken about it before. We need to go through every single system that you have, and we need to just review, make sure the password policies are still good, make sure everything's up to date, make sure no changes were made. So that those are some examples. Um, I finished the meeting with the client. I write down all the action items that I got from the meeting. Um, I make sure to follow up with them over the course of the next week or two until I until I meet with them again. I'm still following up, making sure things are happening. Um, and that brings me to, let's say, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, now I have some policies that I have to review for clients. Part of being a CISO or being in GRC, there's a lot of paperwork. Um, a lot of this is policies. Um, policies are almost consider the backbone of um, GRC. You have to have policies which tell you what to do before you actually do something. A company needs to know um, what they're doing. They need to have written down what they're doing. Otherwise, just doing the actions is not going to get them anywhere. So I'm going to review um, a bunch of policies, make sure it includes everything, uh, make sure it complies with whatever regulations they need to comply with. Um, takes me to 12 o'clock, um, get a lunch break if I'm lucky. I usually eat by my desk. Um, there's a lot to do, I wanna keep moving. Um, now I'm gonna meet with a client of mine that's doing um, SOC 2 type two certification. Um, this is a pretty advanced certification. I could take the client uh, six months. So I've been working with this client for three months already. And we know that we have another three months until we are gonna finish and actually have an audit and auditor is gonna come in. Um, all of this is done remotely. For the actual audit, I'm, I'm gonna go to the, this client's offices, physical offices, um, but right now everything's done remote, which is very nice. Um, and we have a long list of items that we've actually reviewed with the auditor. And the auditor told us, These, this is your list of items. Every, everything on this list has to be met. Uh, we go through the entire list. We see where are we holding, what things are being our blockers, what things can we do, what things can we not do, and we need to gather evidence for everything. So if we say, yes, we have multi-factor authentication on every single system, okay, prove it. They, they're not just going to take my word for it. Prove it. Um, so we have to be able to get screenshots, show them that. Um, yes, we did a penetration test. Okay, prove it. So we need to show them the report from the penetration test. Uh, yes, we actually fixed the findings. Okay, how do you prove that you fixed the findings? So there's for everything that we're going to do, we have to have a way to prove it, and we have to gather that evidence um, little by little by little. So this meeting is a one and a half hour meeting. It takes a very long time. They're, they're very thorough. I'm being thorough. Um, and we're going to go through every single item on the list. Again, make sure that we have what we need. Everything's up to date. Figure out what the blockers are. Are again and um, see what we can cover until the next meeting. Oh, I think we're now about um, two o'clock and I have another meeting with a CISO client. In this case, they had an incident um, last week and they were on top of it. Um, a lot of the incidents that I had with clients, they didn't really need my input. They were small things. Again, these I'm talking about small clients. They knew what to do. They weren't major incidents, no ransomware, um, nothing like that. Um, but they had a little incident. They had some, some um, bot, not even an actual physical person, but some bot got into their cloud environment. Um, how did they get in? passwords, um, was their MFA. So they, they handled it themselves right away. They locked down that user. Um, the bot user created a crypto miner, 
this is a true story. The bot user created a crypto miner on their AWS environment, and within um, within 24 hours, or with, within a couple hours, by the time they realized it, they had twenty five thousand um, dollars in fees from this crypto miner, which is um, which is that which is very big for them. So it was only monetary. They found it. They locked it out. Um, but we have to now discuss. And again, this is this is last week. But now we have to go over. We have to create an incident report. They have to do that for compliance reasons. They have to have a report of what happened. We have to make sure that um, everything was done properly to make sure that this bot user can't get in. Where did he get the credentials for? Um, we discussed, do they want to get forensics involved, which means hiring an outside team. They decided against it. It wasn't worth it at the time. I didn't push it because I didn't think um, in a lot of these cases, you never figure out where they got the password. They found it somewhere. You never, you never figure it out in the end. Um, and it didn't really matter to them so much. Um, and then lessons learned. So lessons learned is the most important part. So we discussed what can we learn from this? What do we need to do more secure? Um, and we had a few lessons learned. And we finished that up. Now we're reaching the end of my day. It's now 3.30. I'm going to review... My, my day actually ended before 3.30, but we won't discuss that. Um, I started early and ended early so I could be home with my kids, which is very nice. Um, and now I just review what I did in the day, prepare for tomorrow, close all my tasks, make sure everything's written down, make sure I have a list of everything because I'm in a lot of meetings, a lot's happening. And if I don't write everything down, I'm going to forget it. Um, and that's basically um, a day in my life. Any questions? I'm out of breath, Leah. I don't know about you. <laughs> It was fun. Very. Uh, I should say, um, I don't. Do, I, that's not what I'm working at currently. I left that um, job. I was doing that for about two plus years, and I left that job in November. I'm working somewhere else now. Um, but that was my life as CISO GRC. Um, I did. If there's no other questions right now, there are a couple of things I wanted to um, say about CISO and GRC that might help you. Um, if you've never heard about it before, if you want to make a decision, if it ever comes up that you are looking into a job in CISO GRC, um, it's different than penetration testing. It's different than SOC. It's different than what you think about when you think about, um, cybersecurity. You're not coding. You're not, um, intensely on the computer, um, trying to hack into a system. It's, it's very fast paced. Um, there's a lot, a lot of knowledge. You need to have a lot of knowledge of a lot of different domains um, and understand how things work. Um, and it's a lot of communication. So um, if you going into cyber and you're like, like me at one point, I said, I don't wanna talk to computers, I wanna talk to people. And then I ended up going into cyber. Well, I did end up, I'm talking to people all the time. Um, a lot, a lot of communication, a lot of talking to people, a lot, a lot of meetings. So that's, that's an interesting part of it. Um, a lot of time management, and um, I guess that's it. What, um, Leah? What would you counsel people to focus on if they're, you know, considering GRC as opposed to, you know, pen testing or SOC? What, what type of stuff in their studies should they be looking at? A management related. So in regards to tests, there's a test called CISM. Um, it's considered the best. It's very, very good for um, CISO or GSC. It's more, it's more high level. So um, definitely studying for it is going to help you and give you the information, but it might not be something that you can take straight, straight out the bat. Um, AWS, um, studying AWS, understanding how AWS works is very important. Um, um yeah, having a very good overall picture of of everything that goes into cyber um, and the why behind it. So why do I need um, why do I need pa good passwords? Understand that. Um, understand what types of threats a company. Um, fo follow up on the news. Be on top of the news and what's going on in the news. For example, um, there was a, a healthcare a large attack in the healthcare industry at the beginning of this year, um, change healthcare in the United States. I don't know if you heard about it, if it made the current events in your class or not, um, but this was a huge hack and um, we were discussing it a lot because um, our clients wanted to know what does it mean for them? It was a ransomware attack. How did they get in? We were trying to figure out how did they get in and how do we take that as a lesson and apply it to ourselves? Um, so a lot of being on top of the news and learning from what's going on in the world, um, how you can apply that 
apply that information. Um, and as things change, also understanding what's changing. So now we're seeing password lists is coming out, this idea of no passwords. Google's having these, um, you don't need passwords anymore. What are the alternatives to passwords? Why is MFA so important? These sort of things, um, understanding that um, and reading up about it. Leah, um, you were able to sort of jump in at, at CISO as a service, a really high level, and that's partly because of your brains and your experience and everything else. What, what would be another way to start in GRC that's not so high level? Um, what other ways? Um, so GRC itself is a field in and of itself, and a lot of bigger companies will have a team specifically for um, GRC, where you, where you work on a team, and there are people working on creating policies, um, monitoring compliance, making sure that things are being collected. Um, I guess that's, that's what I was thinking that we had yeah. some students that they started and they were basically filling out questionnaires and checking other people's questionnaires. It was very paperwork oriented, very detail oriented and less technical. It was about, you know, seeing how people are answering these questions according to protocol and so forth. Yeah. And you learn a lot from that. Yeah, a, a good way to again begin and and that part of the industry and then and then move forward from there. So, do any of the students have any questions? Otherwise, I'll let Leah go. Um, I just I'm just telling the students that I'm sending you now a link. Um, Aaron will be here at nine o'clock and we'll be in a different Zoom room. So I'm sending you that link now. Leah, thank you so much for being with us. It's so. Oh, yeah, I had a question. Oh, great. Go ahead, Effie. So I saw that there's a lot of AWS certificates. Do you recommend doing a lot of them or like is two are two enough? Because there's no, like not even like, two, I would say. I would say unless you know specifically what you're going into it for, um, do the first one. The first one's gonna help you um it, Listen, if you're working for, if you all of a sudden start out working for a huge company, a huge bank in the United States or something, or a huge corporation, they're not going to be on AWS, but all the startups are on AWS. So if you either work for a startup or you somehow are doing consulting for a startup, um, a lot of them are in AWS. If they're not, they're on Azure. If they're not, they're on GCP, which is all very similar. So I... I've recommended this a lot um, to do the AWS um, Certified Cloud Practitioner, CCP. It's the lowest level one, but it really gives you the basis, the foundation, and you can at least know what you're talking about and sound intelligent. In my case, sound intelligent was important because um, I was talking to my clients, but you can know, you, but you know, you really do know what you're talking about. And if you decide to take it further, then you do, do the next level. Um, I know some of the penetration testers do the next level because they need to understand how AWS works. Or um, if you move somewhere into different DevSecOps, like on the, the computer programming security side, um, it's worth it to take a level up. But un until then, I would say just start with the lowest level. So then I should just get like other certificates just for AWS, just that one. You can mind getting, like, if I have time to get other certificates, like not AWS after that? Secure, so if you want to go into GRC, there's also Security Plus. So there's, mm -hmm. the, I think the 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 lowest one of the pluses is Networking Plus, I think. And then there's Security Plus. So Security Plus is a very, very good basis for GRC. Um, I should have mentioned that probably. That's probably better to start with than, um, than AWS because it's more general. Um, but I would say let's say security plus and then AWS. AWS is a, more of like an easy win because it's mm -hmm. dollars. It's not a huge amount of study, yeah. tons of good resources. Um, it's more like an easy win. I think security plus is a little harder than that, but security plus, I really should have started with security plus. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Leah. Take good care. You Thanks. too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll see you in a different Zoom at nine o'clock. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.